Good evening. I'd like to call to order this special town council meeting for Thursday, April 27th, 2023, the budget workshops. Please rise for a moment of silence. Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will call the roll. She's got her hand out. All right. Do you want to call it? Yes. It's in front of you. Uh, Ellenson is here. Carmody? Here. Fishbein? Laffin? Here. Marone? Here. Tata? Here. Testa? Here. Zandri? And uh, Chairman Cervoni? I'm here. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm just going to go through the role of the departments we have tonight just to see. Uh, to see which departments are here. Uh, and for the departments here, who has questions? Um, so does anybody have questions for police? Wow. Police gets to skate. I don't think, it, yeah. yeah, don't run too fast. Animal control. Uh, I have a question for animal control. Questions for fire? We have questions for fire. Please stay. Civil preparedness? It is fire, right? Right. No questions about civil preparedness. Public works? Public Works, have a good evening. Yep, don't, don't trip. <laughs> Engineering. The Engineering Department can skate too. Questions regarding, well, don't go yet. Cap and non-recurring. We have a question for cap and non-recurring. Sorry. Uh, do you need to grab Rob? Why don't you grab him? With my apologies for being presumptuous. Okay. Questions regarding the six year capital budget? None. Questions regarding the Conservation Commission? None. Oh, Inland Wetlands, sorry, Inland Wetlands. Yep, no, see ya. Planning and zoning, questions? No questions about Chote? Oh, planning and zoning, no, you're all, ZBA, questions? None. I think Mr. Pagini, you're all set. Questions regarding the building department? You're all set. Health Department. Your first budget, and you, you're just walking out of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Clearly you're not offended. All right. Uh, Mitch, can we have animal control come up?
you could just introduce yourself for the record. Yes, uh, Mitch Gibbs, Animal Control Officer. Thank you. Thank you for sticking around and humoring me. I just want to know about the state of your building, the condition of repair. We had some violations a year ago or so, and uh, if you could just bring us up to speed. Yes, so um, we had an inspection uh, back in December, and we passed. Um, you know, all the issues were fixed with the floors. Um, we've had the air conditioning uh, installed and the upgrade for the heating system, and that's been running fine. So, um, you know, everything that, um, all the major stuff has been taken care of, and now we just address the little minor things that pop up. And so we're, we're in a good state building. Lines. Hot water, insect screens. Yes. All that stuff. Yeah. Wonderful. Glad to hear it. Thank you. You do, uh, you do yeoman's work for an abandoned population, and I'm Thank grateful you. for that. Appreciate it. Uh, any other questions? Questions from the public? There being none, congratulations on your first budget. Thank you. Yeah. Fire. Good evening, Joe Sutton, our fire chief. Deputy Fire Chief Sam Wilson. Deputy Fire Chief Mike Shaw. Thank you. Uh, do you want to give a summary or do you want to go right to the grilling? Certainly, if uh, you'd allow me, I'd like to give a brief overview of the budget and uh, operations for the past year. Thank you. We as your fire chiefs and emergency services administrators take this job very seriously. As we take into consideration the needs of the community and the expectation of emergency services delivery here in Wallingford, while balancing it with what the town can afford and was willing to pay. I'd like to preface the 23-24 budget request with the overview of the past year's operational summary. Call volume. The department has continued to experience an unprecedented increase in emergency call volume for the second year in a row. A 12% increase in 2021, followed by 11.5% increase in 2022. That's a 25% increase from 2020, going from 6,306 emergency calls in 2020 to 7,885 emergency responses last year. Early indications this year indicate this trend is going to continue with call volume increasing. We're attempting to manage simultaneous overlapping emergency calls where we're routinely handling and operating on three, four, five, even six calls deep. This is a continuous challenge for our fire officers and they're continually rise to the challenge managing our department's resources effectively. Implementation of RSI. Last year we had rapid sequence intubation. Uh, this is a new uh, life-saving procedure that we implemented last year after several months of planning and training in conjunction with our medical control physician. The Wallingford Fire Department is one of only a handful of agencies statewide that is able to perform this procedure in the field. And we believe that we may be the only fire department-based EMS agency in the state that provides this life-saving intervention. In the past year, the Wallingford has a better outcomes. Without this intervention, the patient would not have had a chance of having a successful airway established. COVID, I do want to mention about COVID. The last three years, these people have been on the front lines of the pandemic. They've been thoroughly challenged by the COVID-19 and its variants and subvariants. And we'll have a long, this will have a long-term impact on our workforce, both physically and emotionally. Many of our members have contracted the virus during this period. This has created a burden on our budget as well as our struggle to recruit new members and staff all of our apparatus. The fire department members have been courageously on the front line throughout this pandemic and they continue to come to work bravely and serve the community every day. I want to touch on EMS staffing and ambulance shortages. EMS providers in the state of Connecticut have been experiencing EMS and ambulance staffing shortages at a level that's unprecedented. This decline with individuals entering the EMS field started long before the pandemic. Social and economic factors that were compounded by the COVID-19 pandemic 
have created difficulties in recruiting qualified EMS employees to fill positions. More specifically, firefighter paramedics and EMTs as staff transport ambulances statewide. Regionally, this translates into increasing longer ambulance wait times for transport to the hospitals and decreasing likelihood of receiving advanced life support intervention by paramedics. Fortunately, the Wallingford Fire Department is the provider of ambulance transport service in our community, and we have been able to continue to provide excellent service. However, it's become more routine to run out of ambulances and rely on mutual aid ambulances to provide additional service during times of high call volume. This past year, mutual aid ambulances responded to 911 initiated incidents in Wallingford over 1,600 times for transports. As your fire and emergency services administrators, we're actively engaged in working to overcome these issues here in Wallingford. Additional staffing request. In this year's proposed budget, we have included a request for four more firefighter positions. This is directly related to addressing dramatic increase in emergency call volume. The rise in call volume is a contributing factor in the increase of department personnel fatigue and injuries. Currently, I have four people out on injuries. That results in higher overtime costs to fill the vacant positions in order to maintain minimum department staffing requirements. The additional firefighters will strengthen each platoon from 14 to 15. This is going to provide us with new opportunities in respect to operational flexibility, work to reduce injuries, and stabilize the overtime budget. Recruitment of talent. We're continuous, we continue to aggressively recruit new firefighter paramedics and EMT candidates to fill open positions. This has been a challenge due to the severe shortage of individuals that want to enter the jobs in emergency services field. The volunteer division. We continue to actively support first responders in the volunteer division with a dedicated SALT cost center for initial training and support for ongoing and advanced training opportunities at no cost to the volunteer candidate. There is also an annual capital funding request for personal protective equipment for volunteer first responders, which is intended to outfit new volunteer members. This budget reflects a recent contract agreement between the town and the fire union that includes two years of general wage increases along with salary adjustments for EMTs and ambulance transport division. Most of the increase you see in the operating budget is attributed to this new contract. The remainder of the operating is for the general increases which includes the four proposed firefighter positions. As your fire and emergency services administrators, we annually review the cost of the town for fire and emergency services by comparing per capita cost with other similar communities for these services. With that information, we're able to determine what we can continue to deliver these services at or below the per capita cost of those communities while offering and delivering critical, vital, value-added services that would paramedics and with our own ambulance transport services. Mr. Chairman, thanks, thank you for the opportunity to make my opening statement. I'm prepared to take any questions from the council. Thank you, Chief. Councilor Laffin. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, for coming. Good summary. It kind of cleared up actually some of my questions. Uh, I think the staffing increases are, are as we've talked about, are probably not, are, are not probably, they are necessary um, <clears throat> to kind of readjust where we were going and help with the, the overtime issues. The fire marshal position is still unfilled and then that will be filled is because that was my uh, from what I understand uh, we have a TA with the contract but the contract is not signed uh, and I believe that there's a job description issue with the fire marshal that still has to be uh, discussed between the town and the uh, bargaining unit so I do have a request to fill the fire marshal but they've been not able to do the test yet until they get the job description ironed out okay okay so the the plan is it's going to be filled anyway. It's not going Absolutely. To be I have okay. a request in to do that. Okay. That's it for me right now. Councilor Marone. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Chief, for that, uh, that opening. I appreciate it. Uh, you answered a lot of my questions with regard to the vacancies. Um, so the ambulance, <clears throat> you did talk about the ambulance. 
So the, the, right now we have essentially two full-time ambulances, correct? That is correct. And last year we had talked about the potential of adding a third ambulance. Is that something we envision in the... We do envision that's one of, uh, as I spoke about uh, during my opening statement, we are continually looking at it. We're trying to get up to full staffing, up to our staffing that we're authorized for. Right. Uh, we did have a couple of challenges, but we did do a, a salary adjustment for EMTs. I just ran a test, mm -hmm. or ran, there was a posting for EMTs. We have several qualified candidates, according to HR, and we should be uh, testing them in mid-May. Mm -hmm. That will give me an opportunity to hire and get up to my authorized strength and then uh, you know, hopefully go in that direction. Okay, perfect. And on the, um, uh, so I know you're increasing the, the staff of uh, uh, paramedic <laughs> firemen. What, uh, what's our staff look like now in terms of um, uh, how many openings do we have? I have uh, three openings and there'll be a fourth one uh, probably in another week. Okay, so it'll be nine then. If, assuming that the budget passes <laughs> as is, it'll be nine that you'll be looking at. That is correct. Okay. How long do you think it would take you to hire? I, I mean, I guess the training would depend on whether they come to us already prepared, right? But It could take the balance of the remainder of the year. I do have uh, a candidate that I should be interviewing in another week. Okay. Uh, that's pretty promising. And there's two more candidates that are firefighter paramedics that I may be able to interview in another month, meaning they're finishing up paramedic school. Okay, perfect. And then my only other question is, so I noticed the volunteer tax abatement. Uh, the money expended through January was 26,000, but, but this is something that gets paid once a year, is that correct? That is correct. All right, so, that, so then it went up 5,000 between 22 to 23, and then we're adding an additional, we're budgeting another 47.50. Is that, do we anticipate more volunteers, or can you get, explain? Well, that? Uh, last year there was a the statute, uh, there was a ability where they increased, where the town can increase their tax oh, abatement okay. from 1500 to $2,000 per year for the maximum, so I'm anticipating that. Okay, okay, perfect. I know I ask you a lot of questions about this stuff, Chief, but no, that's the, my friends and neighbors are very happy with the service you provide, so I, I do appreciate you know, your effort uh, in that regard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Testa. Thank you. Good evening, Good gentlemen. Evening. Um, um, I'm probably asking questions that you may have already answered, but I just want to be clear. No worries. I'm not going to pull any punches. You know, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of concern expressed in the last couple of years about the, the structure of coverage trying to word it in a way that shows I understand it. Um, we made some changes with the decision to hire more EMTs, and there's been some criticism of that. However, it goes, um, I know there was a problem hiring EMTs, and hopefully that will be um, solved with more reasonable salaries and then a new contract. But one thing that pops up a lot is the, the idea that, uh, or the reality that fire, firefighters, paramedics are on call or have to be around working extremely long shifts to be available. So do you, so my question is very simple. Because my only concern is that you are staffed to the level you need to be to provide the level of service that we've come to expect from you, which is the best. <laughs> it's, that's a, and, I, and I'm not stroking you. That's Wallingford. Wallingford Emergency Services are at the top of the at the top of the list, and it's taken a long time to get there. And we got there, and we are there. I was a little concerned over the last few years that the issue of money caused changes. And maybe I was I'm mistaken. So all I want to know is that does this budget provide you with sufficient funding to get the staffing up to the level where you need to be so that our, we have sufficient ambulance coverage, fire coverage, we're not holding people for 36 hours in case they, we need them, and so on. Yes, it does. All right. And we will continue to adapt to the needs of the community. Okay. But this budget does reflect what I believe 
we need in order to provide the service to the community that they need and they've come to expect and deserve. Okay, and I know you, I, I missed the number, I heard the number four, then I heard the number nine. Are we, uh, um, it, we're, we're hiring to pick up I have currently open, open positions and then the correct. budget open positions? That, that's correct. Yes, it'll be about eight open positions. I'll get, I am looking to put on four additional and I have, Got it. I'll have four openings as of next week on the fire rescue division. So okay. that's a total of eight. So you have, you'll have what you feel you need? Yes, sir. If in this budget, yes, sir. This is really the only time we can really ask this. Yep. You know, we can, we can bring you in here during the year and talk about things, but that gets sensitive sometimes. It's budget time. And I know you're sitting in front of the guy that signs your budget and you report to, but this is the only time we can ask. Absolutely. Is I the, understand that. Is I the money the money you need in the budget, and it sounds like you're, you feel comfortable that it is. Yes, it's what I asked for, All right. and that's what I'm getting. And as a side note, um, does it appear you, you might have opportunities to fill some of these positions from the volunteer ranks? Yes, uh, that's, I'm looking forward to uh, having a firefighter EMT test also, along with a firefighter paramedic mm -hmm. to provide some opportunities. Okay, because that's another thing that I, another area where I feel we are, you know, we are so uniquely blessed in town that we have the combined services that have always worked well together and have always been there. And uh, I, I appreciate the fact that changes were made over the last few years to, to adjust the reimbursement levels to the volunteers for their training and obviously all that we're doing to uh, for the tax incentives and the, the putting them into the pension, that's all going well. So, all right, that's really all I really cared about. I wanna make sure you have what you need and hopefully we'll get to the point where everybody's operating to the point where they're comfortable and um, stop hearing all the complaints. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, questions or comments from the public? There being none, gentlemen, you're done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Up next, uh, cap and non-recurring. You can just remind us who you are for the record. For your record, Rob Boltemite is Public Works Director. Allison Kapuscinski, Town Engineer. Mr. Boltemite, thank you for coming back after I dismissed you. Well, you know, you, you told me not to run, and it was actually bad advice. <laughs> <laughs> One time in my life that somebody listened to me. First time I listened to right? Yeah, Councilor Tata. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm so sorry to make you stay because I don't, I don't think this question is probably for either of you. Um, <laughs> so I apologize. Um, I have a question. Maybe this is for the Comptroller. Um, so there's a million dollars sitting in the Cap and Non that was the Transfer to Community Pool Capital Projects Fund. Um, we haven't spent it, obviously. Um, and I'm just, I'm wondering what happens I think because of the, the years that the budget goes, we won't see that again in next year's budget because it'll time out. Um, so where will that show in the future? I just don't want future councils to forget that that money is sitting there. Uh, I don't have that answer for you right now, but I can uh, get it over to Mr. Senna tomorrow morning and we can get back to you. I appreciate that. Or if, I don't know if anybody else knows or we should just wait for Mr. Senna. Okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure that, like I said, that doesn't get just kind of lost in the shuffle. So at least when we see it every year, we know it's still sitting there. Um, but that was my only question. So again, I'm so sorry that you two had to stay. I'm good. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Testa. Hello. Okay, I know. I I know we we have an ongoing uh, multi-year plan for sidewalk installation and replacement and that's funded out of this cap and non recurring fund 
that's the sidewalk installation program that is done based on your the zones mapping out of the yeah. zones and all 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 and that's great um do you have some type of analysis or idea of what it would take to repair all the sidewalks where there are these you know obnoxious asphalt repairs and bumps and yada 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 I so can't we haven't I just said yada 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 I apologize <laughs> Um, we haven't done an analysis to see what that would take. Um, yeah. It's really much more um, easier to chew, I guess, you know, if we take it in our zone by zone approach. We right. feel like that's much more thorough. And um, when we do it that way, we get to do a full inspection of the street where there are trips reported, but maybe we catch some other ones that weren't reported. Um, right. So we do feel like it's the most thorough way about this. Um, yeah. Is there. I mean, is there a, a log of, of problem areas that have been reported? Yes. There, there is? Mm -hmm. Okay. And is that in your office or public works? Uh, engineering. All right. So when I, something, I find an area and I call it in or, and as we'll soon find out, maybe our new committee will point things out. You'll, you, you do, so in effect, you do have that, the analysis I'm talking about based on what's been reported. You haven't walked every sidewalk, and I understand that. But when people say there's a problem, and we're there, they are told, well, you know, that zone is three years out. But we know about it. So perhaps, Rob, your department goes and does a temporary patch. Mr. That's Chairman. That's kind of how it works, right? So maybe, maybe I can help a little bit. You know, okay. By state law, uh, once we have notice of a defect, be it in a road or a sidewalk, we have a duty to respond within a reasonable time. Uh, upon notice of a sidewalk defect, that there's a trip, well, first we receive the notice, then someone from engineering goes out and determines is this a tripping hazard or not. If it is, then it's scheduled for emergency repair, which is not public works. Uh, they have a contractor who would go out and do the emergency repair. Um, the emergency repair then is maintained for so the time necessary to reach that as a permanent repair, which with the zones um, obviously can be a significant period of time. Your, your earlier question about if we did all the sidewalks at one time, well, we're spending two to $300,000 a year. So if, if, um, if we tried to do all of them, and I think it would be a logistical nightmare, we'd have uh, sidewalks and, and highways disadvantaged with, with the repair going on all over town. But I, I'd have to guess it's the multi-millions of dollars. Absolutely, yeah. In, in order to do all of them at one time. And again, a logistical nightmare as far as uh, the public being able to use the sidewalks and, and potentially disruption of traffic as well. But we are spending two to $300,000 a year in putting in new sidewalks. That, that is not the money for the temporary repairs. Is that correct? Uh, we use the same account for both. Same account? OK. Mm -hmm. But it's a fraction of it that yeah, goes yeah. for a temporary repair. Yeah, the, the bulk of that account is absolutely for new sidewalks, which are expensive. OK. I appreciate that, and I understand it. Um, didn't under, it, it didn't answer my questions, but I appreciate that. But the mayor did bring up, he did say an emergency repair would not be a patch repair. So Clarify that, please. I think uh, it may have been meant as temporary repair. So we. Thank you. Yeah. So we get the um, report. If we determine it is a trip hazard, then we send it out and hope the work is done quickly. So there's, there's not necessarily a program where if we are made aware of a hazard, that sidewalk is completely repaired and replaced. Um, it can happen in a very infrequent um, situation. So for example, this past year, Fox Run Drive had multiple layers of uh, bituminous and it wouldn't have been responsible to put another layer. Um, the risk manager did weigh in and, and you know, 
advised us that a permanent repair would, um, permanent replacement, sorry, would be the best solution there. So it was, it was a one-off. Um, it's yeah. definitely not the, the typical, and there were also, um, it, it was a problem area for, since I started, so. Right, uh, and what, what budget does that come out of? This, if that's done, where you said Fox Run, when that was yeah. done, how was that paid for? Out of, was it your annual replacement budget or was it out of some other budget? I, I believe it was the annual replacement budget, but I would like to confirm and I could let you know if okay. it's anything different. Um, and I understand that, um, and I'm not, I'm not suggesting we are violating any laws. I mean, uh, clearly, um, if, if a hazard is reported, we respond to it because the law requires it. My, the point I'm making is it is normally and almost always a temporary patch solution until that stretch is in the zone done that year. And again, that program is a good one. It's a prudent use of capital funds because it's planned. Okay, but what I, where I feel we're falling short is all of those patches that aren't in the current zone drag on until we get to them. And I think we need to find a way to get to those more quickly and more effectively. And that's not to suggest we repair all the sidewalks in town all at once. It's can, how do we affect those repairs? And that's why I asked <clears throat> not long ago when there was an opportunity to apply for grants, infrastructure grants, somebody determined that they couldn't be used for sidewalk repair. And I don't accept that answer, but it's too late now anyway. I just feel like there is, or there are multiple opportunities to secure federal and or state infrastructure grants to repair more sidewalks than we currently are. And I don't feel like we're going after them. And the, the, the answers I get from the administration see, always revolve around, it would be a logistical nightmare to do that. It, it's like, it's from one extreme to the other. Do nothing or I'm not suggesting we immediately repair every sidewalk in town tomorrow. That could be logistically difficult. It also doesn't have to be done by your department or your department. If we receive the money, we have contractors we can hire to do this. I'm just looking for a more proactive approach to repairing more sidewalks more quickly than we are now. And that's why I'm asking these questions. I want to make sure I understand the, the current MO and what's standing in the way of doing it differently and uh and that's and that's fine I'm, I'm okay now and i do want to compliment you both on the job you're you're both doing you're doing a tremendous job um in both of your 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 uh your positions um we're very fortunate and i none of what i'm saying is in any way a criticism of what you're doing Thank you. Councillor Carmody. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening uh, to you both. Uh, thank you for being here, and I'll be quick. Um, you know, I, I, I've talked about this same issue to you, Allison, in the past, I think, last year's budget session as well. Um, and, and I agree with Councillor Testa. I think the, the both of you are doing a tremendous job. I hear nothing um, but great praise of, about both of, of your work. and. The two of you have been so responsive and, and helpful to, to me when I've had questions and constituent issues. Um, you know, my, my big thing, well, I guess let me first ask, remind me, how, how do, do we do one zone a year or multiple zones a year? How long does it take to get through each zone? It, I, this is, it, it depends okay. on how big the zone is, how much uh, sidewalk there is, and how many repairs are needed. Sure. Um, so we're in zone 12 right now. Um, I believe this will complete our second full year in Zone 12. 
we're not quite done yet. Um, and it also remind me, how, how many zones are there in town? 13. 13, okay. And the center town, downtown, uh, is, is zone one or? Yeah, I think it's kind of broken up yeah. one through four, but it, it's the lower numbers, I believe. Yeah, and so I, I think I've said this to you before, and this is my big thing is, um, you know, I, I think we should make an exception for the center of town, downtown area, you know, where there's a tremendous amount of foot traffic. You know, it, it's, um, it, it's a center of commerce. We, we, we want it to be an attractive place for people to walk. Um, and, and I think, you know, we, we have some of the vituminous patches uh, on, on Center Street, around Center Street Cemetery, on North Main Street. And, and really, I, I just, I find this, and, and again, it's, it's not against you, I just find it's, it's unacceptable that we have this situation in our downtown area. Um, this is the heart of our town, and, um, and, and I think we need to make an exception for the center of town. Um, and, and I know it's not necessarily your decision, um, but I, you know, I think you know, it's something that this council should look at at some point, maybe at ordinance or, or um, you know, in some other way, but I, I think this is something that we need to address I know that you have an aggressive program and doing a, gr a great job um, w with sidewalks, but I, I think there needs to be an exception for our center of town. Um, and I, I think you know this not is not necessarily a budget item at this moment, but I think it's a, more of a policy issue that this council needs to address. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Certainly, Councilor Marone. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Very briefly, so just for um, for the people that have been, haven't been on the council for long, so there's 13 zones. How many? How long does it take us to get through all 13? And I, I think it was represented before, before that we've never gotten through the whole list, correct? Yeah, right. so. And this program gonna, has been in place for how long? So I'm going to answer it okay, this, go ahead. this way. Thank you. All right. um, so it's, it's Allison's department that oversees it. But as you know, before I went over to Public Works almost four years ago, I was mm -hmm. with engineering for about 20 years. Um, we were already in zone six when I went there 20 years ago. Um, and as Allison mentioned, they're just finishing up zone 12 now and then going to zone 13. There is good news. Zone 13 is um, like I think where my neighborhood is, like the northeast section of town. There's very little sidewalks. A lot of it's newer. Probably go through 13 relatively quickly. Uh, and then back to the you know, beginning areas of, of downtown, one through four. Um, I think what the philosophy always was is that once you could go through all 13 zones, every time you go back through the zone program, it would be faster and faster um, because you would be dealing with less in, in each zone. Um, but I, I guess that's a, a long way to answer and say that it's been over 20 years and we're not through all 13 zones. I mean, the life of concrete is like 50 years under perfect conditions, right? Sure. So in a neighborhood, like you're, you know, you're not gonna get that much. But so to Sam's point, I guess my point is just, you know, perhaps, there's a, and not, obviously not in this budget. So I think the two of you are doing a great job. Let me preface my comments with that. However, you know, there's probably a time when we should look at this whole zone program and maybe a 30 year maintenance program is not the, you know, the optimal program. But thank you very much. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Questions or comments from the public? Thank you both for sticking around. Thank yeah. you, have a good evening. And uh, that's all the business we have tonight. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, hearing none, this meeting's adjourned.